Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Little Rock Board of Directors meeting for October 17th, uh, 2017. I'm happy to uh, have all of you here in City Hall with us as we uh, go about conducting the city's business. Madam Clerk, if you would, please read the roll. Director Hendricks. Director, Hend Director Richardson. Director Peck. Here. Director Hines. Here. Director Wright. Here. Director Wyrick. Director Compuris. Director Fortson. Director Idcock. Vice Mayor Webb. Here. Mayor Stodler. Here. Let me call on uh, City Director Gene Fortson to, uh, uh, for our uh, hmm. invocation, please. Thank you, Mayor. Would you join me in prayer? Our God, we thank you for the opportunity to gather again as free people in a free country to look after the people's business. Guide us this evening as we try to make proper decisions to affect this diverse and vibrant city. Look over our first responders and protect them from harm and guide us with your wisdom as we go through this evening. Amen. Amen. If you would please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We've got a couple of presentations before we get into our agenda. And uh, the first one has to do with the City Beautiful Commission Landscape Awards. And uh, let me call on our uh, commissioners to uh, help with that presentation. Thank you, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Board of Directors, City Staff. Uh, I'm, I'm Steve Homeyer. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Commission. Wally Loveless, the Commissioner, is here with me to pre help present the awards. This is our 38th annual Landscape Awards competition. Uh, it involves commercial, institutional, multifamily, or subdivision developments within the City of Roses, which Little Rock is. Nominated landscape developments must be in place one year and have demonstrated excellent design, implementation, continual maintenance, including voluntary upgrades, enhancement that have gone beyond city landscape requirements. Previous winners are not eligible again for five years. Again, the commission voted on these and it was a, a difficult time again. Uh, we picked the top best three. They're not first, second, third place. They're all equal, but it's the top best three landscape awards that we voted on and, and approved this year. And if I could, I would like to ask the director in that uh, award to come down and help present the award to the winner. The first one being, and, and I don't think they were able to make it, uh, Covenant Cove, which is director rights. If you'll come down and accept it. Oh, are you here? Okay. Courtney. I'm sorry. <laughs> Miss Courtney? Pam Brown Courtney, yes, okay. sir. Okay, Steve Homer. If you'd like to say a few words about your project for us. Um, first of all, to the mayor and everyone else, I just would like to say thank you for uh, um, acknowledging the hard work that my team does at Covenant Co. We've been out there a couple of years and we work really hard to <coughs> make the community a better place. And I'm here on behalf of my team to accept the award, but I couldn't do it by myself. So I'd like to take just a moment to say, I appreciate Hinton Lawn Service. They keep up the lawns out there for us. And I'd like to thank Creative Teamwork Landscaping Division. They stay on Hinton Lawn Service to make sure they do it right. And I'd like to thank Misha Jones. She's one of the property managers that manages the property. And mostly, I'd like to thank God for allowing us to get it done and allowing me to be able to work with Director Doris Wright. <laughs> I appreciate her. She's been good. We've had a lot of meetings. Uh, we had a rocky start. Yeah, we did. We big people. Yeah, we are. And we had a rocky start. God and is good. I, God is good. And I think just our relationship mm -hmm. is um, an example for the city because uh, we had a really rocky start, but she had the best interest for John Barrow area, and I promised her that I was only going to do what she wanted, which was make the area better. 
And with the collaboration of the both of us, I'm proud to say that she gave a little, I gave a little, and we got it done. And I thank you all for acknowledging that. Thank you. You're, You're welcome. Right. I appreciate that. I just have to say a few words about Ms. Courtney. She is a woman of dedication, and it's very, very important that you all understand the commitment that she put into this project. It has been many years of work hard work to get it to this level. I am so proud of this development. It is a stable development. It is one of two uh, predominantly African-American areas that are very, very stable. It is well maintained. And I was so impressed when she told me one day, she said, "Miss Wright, she said, one of the reasons my property stays so clean is that when kids pick up paper and they bring it to me, I give them a couple of dollars. So uh, you can see I keep my eyes on it. So I am so impressed, and I want to congratulate you, and you do this, this award is well deserved. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So come up here and take a picture. We also have a, a yard sign to take with you when you okay. put in your property. Here you go. I'll get it. I think I'm in there. I don't want to be. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, a wonderful project. Very good project. Okay, our next uh, recipient of the award is the Fellowship Bible Church, Ward 5, <coughs> Director Hines. Thank you. Could I get you to help me? Uh, Terry White is here, and Jan Linderman from the church. I want to congratulate you guys. This is uh, fellowships one of the my neighbors to my neighborhood and village of Wellington. So I wanted to say congratulations. I know you guys spend a lot of time, and it's a big campus to maintain. So congratulations. Ed, thank you, Mayor and City, uh, the uh, City Beautiful Commission, for this uh, award. Uh, we, this, I do not do it myself, but I do oversee it. Uh, we are in partners with uh, Good Earth, uh, Greg Curtis, and uh, they do a tremendous job for us. And Greg constantly gives us advice on what to do, what not to do. Too much water, not enough water, and so it's a partnership between him and his team and myself and my team. And uh, this is a great honor to, so thank you. Yeah, I would just like to add that uh, it's an honor to be a part of this community and be, be uh, awarded this. Uh, we've truly been blessed with having that 50 acres out there that our church sits on and uh, an opportunity to uh, speak the gospel, but also be able to use those resources for uh, we have a field out there for upward soccer, for life champs. Uh, we do a family fest during the Hall Halloween period. And just uh, we love being a part of the community because that's what brings us all together. All right, our, fi our final landscape award winner happens to be with Central Arkansas Library Systems. And they have won in the past, and they do a very good job of maintaining the libraries. Uh, this one happens to be Hillcrest Hall, the corner of Cavanaugh and Lee Boulevard, Ward 3, Director Webb. We have Nate Coulter and Brian Glover here from the library system.
Thank you, and I want to congratulate you all and say this is not only a beautiful place that welcomes people to Hillcrest, but just in the last three weeks, I've been to three different meetings there, so it's a real community gathering spot, and it's from folks who come from all over the city to enjoy that beautiful uh, outside and interior. So thank you and congratulations to Cal. Mr. Mayor and City Directors and City Beautiful Commission, Stephen Wiley. Brian does all the work. I asked him if he wanted to give the thanks. He said, no, that's your job. But, uh, uh, we do take seriously at the library system, and I can claim none of the credit for this because this has gone on for 24 or 5 years, uh, and I've only been there a year and a half, two years. But the library takes seriously its responsibility not only to provide great things inside the library and now online that you can get access to, but we want it to look like something that everybody in every neighborhood can be proud of their library and we think uh, that we've done that bobby roberts uh, and his taxpayers and you folks for supporting us get most of the credit for that but there are people like brian who do all the things outside and we think that's just as important that when people drive up and they go in it needs to look nice and feel good people will be more excited about coming there and get more out of the benefits that are available there so we appreciate the recognition and appreciate all the support from the commission and from the city to help us continue to provide what we think is a world-class library system here thank you I'd like to say I had something to do with this, but I've only been on the job for two months, so <laughs> this has been many years of hard work from various garden clubs throughout Little Rock, and hopefully we can continue to maintain it as they have for so many years. Thank you. Thank you, participants and winners and directors for helping me present them this year. Uh, we really appreciate y'all giving this time so we can do this every year. Uh, it, it's really wonderful. Our commission really takes pride in doing this, and we just thank all y'all. Uh, that's it. Thanks. Well, Steve and Wally, thank you so much for your service and your contribution to uh, uh, our City Beautiful Commission. And certainly these landscape awards are very important to the people who receive them and uh, equally important to the community that drives by these wonderful locations and, and notices the, the importance of, of that landscaping, what it does to beautify our city. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, next we have a presentation. Uh, I'd like to introduce... Uh, uh, some folks that are with us today. Uh, first of all, we have uh, we have two lieutenant commanders uh, of the Navy. Uh, we've got Lieutenant Commander Brett Dawson, Commander Dawson, and we have uh, Lieutenant Commander Reggie Jackson. Uh, nice to see both of you with us. Uh, they're local here, uh, uh, and we also have uh, with us uh, who's going to make a um, uh, a brief presentation of uh, their <coughs> purpose here in our city this week. Um, uh, David Twyford, who is the uh, Command Master Chief for the Navy Region Southeast. We gotta go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good afternoon. On behalf of Rear Admiral Bet Bolivar, the uh, Region Commander for Navy Region Southeast, we want to thank you all for hosting us this week for, for Navy Week Little Rock. Uh, in our short time here, it's been a, a, the city's been phenomenal to us, uh, and we look forward to the rest of the week with all the events we have. Uh, this week gives us an opportunity to re-engage with our, our Navy family. So, uh, you know, just tonight, uh, Director Hendricks was talking about her husband who served in the Navy. Uh, and so we have lots of veterans in the area, a great VA system here, and meeting with our veterans and then our Navy reservists as well that are here, uh, interacting with those folks who serve our Navy every day and are in the, the local area, uh, it means a lot. And so having the city of Little Rock recognize the Navy uh, it just means a lot. So what I would encourage everyone in the city to do uh, throughout the week, if you, if you see a sailor, stop him, 
talk to them, ask them about their service, uh, and uh, just engage with the Navy. We, we love talking about what we do, and we thank you all for hosting us. Well, thank you very much. And uh, uh, certainly um, uh, the profile of Little Rock uh, in the U.S. Navy has uh, grown uh, with the anticipation of uh, the commissioning of the USS Little Rock uh, that's going to happen this December. And uh, for those, uh, for my fellow colleagues on the board and for those that are either here in the audience tonight or watching, we have a reception uh, on Thursday uh, where we're going to be acquainting our community further with uh, what the USS Little Rock can do and how it's going to complement the Navy and, and our forces around the world. So I'd like to encourage everybody uh, to come to Current Hall 530 uh, on, uh, on Thursday uh, for a reception and a presentation on uh, the USS Little Rock and, and the, the entire littoral combat she, uh, ship fleet that, that, that the Navy is, is uh, constructing. So thank you very much. Uh, you know, we have a Naval Reserve uh, over at Camp Pike. Uh, about 300 reservists throughout the state that are here. And we also have another guest with us uh, today, and I want to introduce her. Uh, she's the director uh, of the uh, small business program for the Department of the Navy, uh, Emily Harmon. Uh, Emily, if you'd come forward and, and explain um, what you do for the Navy and why it's important for those of us here in Little Rock. Okay. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, yes, I'm the director of the Department of Navy's Office of Small Business Programs, and what we do is we help small businesses figure out how to do business with the federal government, you know, not just the Department of the Navy, that's our main focus, but, you know, sometimes companies come to us and they don't necessarily sell the kind of product or service that we buy, and we help direct them throughout the federal government as to where they should go. And tomorrow I'll be talking to um, several companies that are coming to uh, hear me talk even more detail about this and answer questions. And, you know, if there's questions that they have that I can't answer, I'll, I'll take them back and get back with them. So this is the fifth Navy week that I've participated in in this year and um, my first time in Arkansas. So first time in Little Rock and I've really enjoyed it so far. Met a lot of great people. And I'm also working with these um, fine young men to help spread the word about the importance of the Navy and um, why we have a Navy and how important it is in our global economy for uh, <clears throat> the exchange of goods and services and, and uh, agriculture especially, which is important, I know, to Arkansas. And Emily is a veteran of the U.S. Navy as well. Yes. Uh, I've worked for the Navy for a long time, <laughs> 36 years, basically, so thank you, sir. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, every year um, the U.S. Navy picks 15 cities throughout the country uh, and, and bring uh, sailors uh, to the city to uh, get the community exposed to, to what the Navy does in a variety of different contexts, and we're one of the 15 cities uh, this year. So thank you so much for being with us, and I, I know most of you are going to be with us uh, through the end of the week. So we look forward to seeing you on the streets of Little Rock. Thank you. Okay, we can now move on to uh, the agenda that we have. We have uh, one Modification, uh, M1 resolution, is there a motion to add this to the uh, consent agenda? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed saying nay. Okay, Madam Clerk, if you would please read the consent agenda as amended, please. The consent agenda consists of a resolution to authorize the city manager to enter into a contract with Morris Beck Construction Services in an amount not to exceed $1,497,883.05 for the renovation of the HVAC system and exterior porches of the U.S. Arsenal Building located in MacArthur Park and for the purposes a resolution to transfer title property to In Affordable Housing Incorporated via special warranty deed for property sold by the City of Little Rock, Arkansas to be used for neighborhood revitalization programs and for other purposes. A resolution authorizes the City Manager to enter into a contract with Hasty Awards in the amount of $56,409 to provide the 2018 Little Rock Marathon Finishers Medals and for other purposes. A resolution authorizes the City Manager to enter into a contract with John Fletcher to purchase approximately five acres of land for the Little Rock Port Authority and for other purposes, a resolution authorizes the city manager to renew the contract with affiliated FE 
Coliseum in the amount of $660,185 for property and casualty insurance for city building and the structures and for the purposes, a resolution to make reappointment as a commissioner of the Little Rock Housing Authority Board of Commissioners and for the purposes, a, or that should have been a resolution. A resolution authorizes the city manager to award a contract to Wagner General Contractors Incorporated in amount not to exceed $100,310.59 for capital at Main Plaza and for other purposes. Funding from the 2012 38 cent capital improvement sales tax. That concludes the consent agenda. There's a motion and a second to adopt the consent agenda. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed saying nay. Uh, the consent agenda is adopted. We can now move on to grouped items 7 through 10. Uh, first reading, please. An ordinance to reclassify property located in the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning app of the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes. An ordinance to reclassify property located in the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the City of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for the purposes. An ordinance to dispense with the requirement of competitive bids due to an exceptional situation to authorize the city manager to enter into a sole source contract with Iron Wave Technologies Incorporated in the amount of $24,100 plus applicable taxes for one year renewal of the city's online bidding, bidding software license and for the purposes. An ordinance to amend Little Rock, Arkansas revised code of ordinances, chapter 6, article 1, to clarify the circumstances under which confinement of an animal within an unattended vehicle shall be considered a violation of the city's animal cruelty ordinance to exclude livestock from the definition of animal and for the purposes, first reading. Move for the suspend the rules and place on second reading. Second. There's a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place these ordinances on second reading, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Both say nay. Second reading, please. An ordinance to reclassify property located in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas. An ordinance to reclassify property located in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas. An ordinance to dispense with the requirement of competitive bids due to an exceptional situation to authorize the city manager to enter into a sole source contract with Iron Waves Technologies Incorporated in the amount of $24,100 plus applicable taxes for a one year renewal of the city's online bidding software license. An ordinance to amend Little Rock, Arkansas revised code of ordinances of 1988, Chapter 6, Article 1, to clarify the circumstance, circumstances under which the confinement of an animal within an unattended vehicle should be considered a violation of the city's animal cruelty ordinance to exclude life to exclude livestock from the definition of animal and for the purposes of second reading we suspend the rules and place on third and final reading second there's a motion and a second to suspend the rules and place these ordinances on third and final reading all in favor indicate by saying aye aye, aye. opposed saying nay third and final reading please an ordinance to reclassify property located in the city of little rock arkansas an ordinance to reclassify property located in the city of little rock arkansas an ordinance to dispense with the requirement of competitive bids due to an exceptional situation to authorize the city manager to enter into a sole source contract with Iron Waves Technologies Incorporated in the amount of $24,100 plus applicable taxes for a one year renewal of the city's online bidding software license. An ordinance to amend Little Rock, Arkansas revised code of ordinances, chapter 6, article 1, to clarify the circumstances circumstances under which the confinement of an animal within an unattended vehicle should be considered a violation of the city's animal cruelty ordinance to exclude livestock from the definition of animal and for the purposes third and final reading I have two cards that both wish to speak in favor of uh, one on item 7 and one on item 10 do you still wish to speak all right very good uh, all in favor of the passage of these ordinances indicate by saying aye aye, aye. both say nay uh, the ordinances have passed. Thank you very much. We can now move on to uh, item 11, ordinance number 11, which is a public hearing. Let me go ahead and open up the public hearing and ask for the first reading of the ordinance, please. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development, establish a plan commercial district title, Mickel Short Form PDC, located at 2904 South Arch Street, Little Rock, Arkansas, amending the official zoning map of the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, and for other purposes. First reading. Then the rules in place on second reading. Is there a second? Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Both say nay. Second reading, please. An ordinance to approve a plan zoning development, establish a plan commercial district title, Nichols Short Form PDC, located at 2904 South Arch Street. Second reading. Who suspend the rules on place on third and final reading? Second. There's a motion and a second to place this ordinance on third and final reading. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Both say nay. Third and final reading. 
And on its reading, please. And on its to approve a plan zoning development, establish a plan commercial district titled Nichols Short Form PDC, located at 2904 South Arch Street, third and final reading. Okay. Uh, is the applicant uh, here? Uh, if you'd come forward, please. This is Miss Linda Mickles. Welcome, Miss Mickles. Uh, hello, everyone on the panel. First of all, I would like to say thank you for the beautiful prayer that went forth. I am here to uh, voice my voice about the beauty salon that I'm trying to do on 2904 South R Street. I do understand it is a residential area, but I think it's really needed there for the, uh, the student, the kids that we have in that area. And I have been working on this project for the last two years and I didn't know anything about zoning. So I kind of went a little backwards with it. So I'm praying and hoping that I have favor with you all. I hope that uh, that no one has just really went on and made they vote, everybody got together. I hope I get justice doing this. And whatever necessary things that I need to do to bring it up to standard uh, for the any type of rules and regulation that need to be done to my shop, I'm willing to do to it. It's over 2,000 square feet. I have enough parking to have it there. And there is other commercial on 2,800 block. But on my street going on down, there is no uh, commercial on uh, 29, but it is on 2,800 block. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Uh, Mickles. Uh, if you just have a seat right sure. down there, and, and we'll see if there's any questions after sure. uh, we finish the, the presentations. Uh, I do have a card who wishes to speak against this matter, uh, Rosalind Scruggs. Good evening, Mayor Stodola and Board of Directors. Uh, my name is Rosalind Scruggs. I live at 2900 South Arch, which is my house is right next door to the residence that is proposed to become a beauty shop. Uh, as Ms. Mickle stated, that block is a residential area. Um, my opinion is that any work that she has done to her home will affect my property because in order for her to get the parking done or anything done is going to impede what is in the neighborhood. The landscaping, that, air, that uh, yard has beautiful trees in the back. Those trees would probably be torn down. There is a one bedroom, um, I guess you could say cottage in the back of that house, which is right beside my yard. And I do feel that anything that is done to that area is going to drastically affect my property, and I don't want to see that happen. As was stated, there are commercial properties located north of where we live, and any uh, project that needs to be done regarding the beauty shop should be moved <coughs> further north instead of in the 2900 South Arch block. So I, I appreciate what she's trying to do, but I do not feel that the location is appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Scruggs. Uh, that concludes the cards. Uh, I note that the Planning Commission did not approve this, which is why it's on appeal to us. There was one aye and nine nays on the uh, vote at the Planning Commission. Uh, let me go ahead and ask for a vote on this. A, a vote aye would be to approve. A couple of questions. Oh, excuse me. Uh, let me close the close public my hearing. On. My light is on. I shit. have a light on. Every light is on. Flashlight. It's not on though. Well, it's not working. All right, let's try it now. All right, Director Adcock, you're first, please. Ma'am, would you come back up to the microphone, please? Are you going to put the beauty shop in the house or in the cottage in the back? Uh, it's going to be in the house, 
and it won't affect her property. If so, I can put up a private fence. She would not see the beauty shop at all because the private fence would cover all of my property. Do you live in the home? No, I do not. Okay. Do you live in the neighborhood? My mother have lived there for 20 years. She lived right across the street from the beauty salon that I'm trying to make. We've been there for years. How long have you owned the home? Um, I have owned the home for like five years. My uncle died, and uh, he given it to me. Okay. How large of a house is it? 2,000 square foot. And how much of it is going to be beauty shop? Uh, all of the 2,000 we but the college one. You said students. Are you having a beauty school? No. It's just for the children in the neighborhood. Uh, it's more like a, a ministry and giving back to the neighborhood, to the kids that's there that needs things like um, uh, get their hair done at a, at a good price that they can't afford to pay $30 at a regular place. They can come to my business and get their hair done at a lower price. So I'm trying to give to the community, not take away from the community. Okay. But you're going to use the whole house for this beauty The whole shop. house for my beauty salon. I have already uh, put some things in the home, like uh, my uh, stands and stuff. Like I said, I kind of went a little backwards because I didn't know anything about zoning, educating myself until I talked to my neighbor across the street that owned a business, which is on the 2800 block. He owned the beauty salon as well. So he was telling me that I have to get mine zoned. So there's already a beauty shop in the neighborhood? It is. Okay, how many operators in 2,000 square feet, how many operators are you going to have? I have seven. Seven. Okay, I have a question for staff. Yes, our planning director, Mr. Collins, to come forward. Jamie. Jamie, a beauty shop with seven operators, how many parking places does it take? Well, you're going to have to have a parking stall for each of the operators if they're full time uh, every day. And then they come by appointment, so that'd be seven plus seven people, so that's about 14. You know, spaces is what we would figure places out. places is in that backyard? Well, was the backyard, she originally proposed, Ms. Mickles proposed four, and then uh, during the planning commission, uh, she has talked about uh, taking down the building in the back, adding an additional two, and then also entering to a parking agreement um, with a commercial property uh, just uh, on that block north of her. Um, forgot what the name of the... It was the True Bikers Motorcycle Club to use their commercial parking <coughs> area as kind of like an overflow parking. Mm -hmm. well, I know the beauty shop I go to has four operators, and they have about 12 or 14 parking places, and lots of times it's hard to find a place there. So, And so staff recommends denial on this. Yeah, and that, the, the denial comes from the location and the use. If, you, if you'll pull up the zoning map... Um, that's on there. Scott? Uh, it's that property that's just to the north of that hashed area. That's the residential piece uh, Ms. Cruz come in and talked about. Uh, if you're using the overflow, you're looking at uh, that the people would walk right in front of the, of the residential business or you know, the residents to go to the parking and, and back and forth. And so that's part of that um, that we was in opposition to it. It's just uh, that it directly affects the residential property in, you know, the pedestrian traffic to and from if that additional parking was to be used. Uh, and then also, you know, just, you know, that adjacent to a commercial, we usually like to have some type of buffer or a transition zone uh, directly from a commercial to a residential. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Director Richardson, you're recognized, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Joan asked my question. I was confused about the, the student, the young people needing that the reference to young people, and I was confused about whether or not there was going to be a salon for a training for young people, so Joan asked my question, and she answered it. So thank you, Ms. Nichols, for answering my question. Director Hendricks. Mr. Moore, would you have staff to come back?
would you read? Would you read for me um, how the planning commission voted? Because I wanted them to hear it. Okay. Um, planning commission voted, voted one for nine against, and one was absent. And I want to share with the board that I did talk with the applicant at length, and I attempted to explain to her that we have rules and regulations in at City Hall. And I think most of you know that I have always supported staff, and I am supporting staff on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, that concludes uh, the cards and the comments uh, on this item. Um, uh, let me call for a vote. A vote I would be to approve Ms. Mickle's uh, request uh, for a plan zoning development to put in her uh, beauty shop. A vote nay would be to deny it. All in favor of it indicate by saying aye. All opposed say nay. Uh, the ordinance has failed. Ms. Mickles, thank you very much. Okay, we can now move on to citizen communication. I have one card from Mr. Russ Raycop. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Directors. Um, what I wanted to bring to the board's attention tonight was uh, uh, in the last couple of weeks, I had uh, made some FOI requests and uh, had, been, uh, had been handled by Mr. Carpenter, and they dealt with uh, uh, communications with uh, board members. And uh, I was surprised to find that the, the board members uh, do not choose to use a littlerock.org address that's available to them, but they uh, use their private uh, emails. And we all know the issues with government and private emails. We've had it with uh, Ms. Clinton, and we've had it with uh, uh, President Trump's uh, staff. And um, what uh, had concerned me was the, uh, some of the emails that I had requested had, uh, had been uh, erased or deleted. And uh, that uh, posed an issue of transparency uh, uh, because uh, there is, happens to be a state uh, statute, it's 554-121, it's entitled tampering with a public record. And uh, it says a person commits the offense of tampering with a public record if with the purpose of impairing the uh, ver uh, verity, legibility, or availability of a public record, he or she knowingly Item two states erases, obliterates, removes, destroys, or conceals a public record. Um, and uh, that is actually a class D felony under our code. These uh, uh, emails that uh, the board uh, might use to uh, uh, inter uh, interact with uh, different city offices, uh, uh, private citizens and things like that, by them not being uh, available to the city on a city.org type address on a private email, that has concerns, especially if they're deleted. Uh, recently, there was a, a, a matter in Fort Smith uh, that uh, the individuals challenged the Open Records uh, uh, Act that they stated that there were uh, emails that were basically uh, constituting a meeting. and. Um, I think uh, the individuals didn't win that case, but it brought up some uh, salient points. And I would uh, urge the, the board uh, and the city manager to look into uh, the possibility of uh, the board using uh, a littlerock.org email address for their official um, business so that we uh, have open and transparent uh, records uh, in the city. Thank you for your time. Uh, thank you, Mr. Raycop. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> That concludes the uh, items we have on our agenda. Uh, Director Peck. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I'd like to call that we uh, move that we go into executive session to discuss personnel matters. Is there a second? second. There's a second. Uh, discussion? Is there any discussion? Director Hendricks, do you wish to discuss? I said I'd like to move that we go into executive session to discuss some personnel matters. Well, we got a motion on the floor, so let me go ahead. Um, Director Adcock. Be discussing. You have to state that it's a personnel matter. When you come back, you have to state if you took any votes and generally what you what the personnel matter was. All right, there's been a motion and a second to go into executive session for personnel matters. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, say nay. We'll be in executive session and we'll return shortly. Or in
recess for executive session. Uh, the board uh, met and had discussion among themselves uh, about our uh, employees, our city manager and our city attorney. No action was taken uh, about any of that. And so we are ready now for a motion for adjournment. We will adjourn. Second. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed saying nay. We're in adjournment. Thank you.